everybody needs to experience a turbo car like this. <laughs> I know. This is so cool. I've been shooting car culture all over the world for the past 18 years. From the best builds to the fastest races, I've seen it all. In this series, I'm highlighting the gearheads that inspire me in our generation. Car culture in some ways is a bit split up with multiple generations leaning towards different types of genres. In my opinion, TJ has been at the forefront of bridging that gap between the old and new. From his young adult life with his first project car to who he is today, TJ documented it all. His journey as a simple car enthusiast on YouTube turned him into the necessary connection between two generations. As if it wasn't impressive enough to build these incredible vehicles at such a young age, TJ is also quite the wheelman. It's been so much fun for me to chase him on track when he's pushing it to the absolute limit. Today, we're going to dive into TJ and his 65 Fastback Mustang and why it's built the way it is. I'm honored to be here. This is pretty cool. I've uh, been a big fan of Larry for years. I think literally like five years ago, six years ago, I like found out who you were. It's been an honor to photograph you doing your thing because you are inspiring the current generation to pick up a wrench and build their own cars. Yeah. It's really inspiring to see someone like yourself that is very driven to build these sort of cars. It's wild to hear you say that, because like I said, it almost feels like, maybe not roles reverse, but when I was younger, when I was first getting introduced, you feel like there's so much you don't know, and there's so much to learn about, and you know, over the last, I don't even know, seven years or whatever, I've gotten a pretty long way, I like to think, and to, again, just be associated with people like yourself, and to be viewed as someone who I was once watching to gather information, it's like a complete honor, it doesn't really feel real. Sometimes I don't feel like I even deserve it, so it's- You definitely deserve <laughs> it. After seeing your property, after seeing some of your cars, I'm just so blown away. But we're gonna talk about your Mustang. This is kind of the highlight, for me at least. This mm -hmm. is something that's really off the wall, something different. And honestly, I know it was inspired by a movie. Yes. But yes. you actually went out to build it in real life, which is super cool. You either love it or you hate it. The older generation, they kind of don't like it, but they don't understand it. Gee, so, I wonder why. Yeah, off the top, like this car, people normally will put like modern V8s or they'll put like a Coyote. Everyone's like, you gotta put the new GT350 motor in it. But my, my like thought was like, yeah, but it's already been done like so many times. So like, why revive a car and just follow the path like every other Mustang restoration? Growing up with Fast and Furious being a really, really big influence on my life. I think as for most people in my generation, I also am fortunate enough to become really close with Sung. Sung plays Han from Fast and Furious, which at this point, like, I credit this build to him because he challenged me to build it. We like talked about it one day and he was like, yeah, it'd be really cool if you did that. The one we used in the movie was made and it doesn't run anymore and no one has done the swap since, so one doesn't currently exist. I was like, oh, that, that'd be pretty cool. And he was like, yeah, you should build that for one of your builds. And I was like, mm, I don't know. It's just like this, this, and that. And he was just like, he kind of just like challenged me to it. And I was like, all right, bet. A year later, that was kind of the, the birth of this. So what did this start life as? It was a running car that was actually 0.5 miles down from my house at the time. A neighbor had it and it had a restoration on it. It was a, a decent restoration, but it wasn't rough. I think I picked it up at the time for like 37 grand, which at that time for a Fastback 65, uh, that was like restoed. It's not bad. But yeah. it wasn't special in any way. It was no, just... it was just your run of the mill restoration 65. It was nothing special. If anything, it was like, one of the most least impressive restorations or swaps you could have done. So while this was done in movie land, yeah. it wasn't actually something that was meant to exist in real life, and you brought it to yes. life. Yes, yeah, so I uh, had the help of JDM in California finding this motor. So, the, I mean, you know, you're a Skyline guy. 
RB26s in the last couple of years, just the motors alone are like coming up over 10 grand. They're getting super hard to find, especially finding like 34 motors. So this is the 32. Um, and then we just did some modifications just to kind of make it hang and, and be a little bit stronger, but it's a stock motor, single turbo. We had to modify the manifold just to get it to fit. You can actually see the manifold's actually like chopped in half right here, just to like get it to fit. It was pretty narrow. It looks like it fits really well, but it's much wider than what the car was intended to sit. Rad Industries did the fab work on getting it to fit. So when I went to Dan after him helping me with my comp car and my Supra, I admire the way they're able to just make their basics so tidy on their race cars. So I went to him and I said, I want it to look like your FD car. I want all of the lines to be AN. I want it to look pretty, I want it to look professional, and I just want it to look clean. So during his FD season in 2020, he started working on this. It was about a year of fab, and there's also a Roadster Shop chassis underneath it. So we were actually able to utilize the Roadster Shop chassis, motor mounts from a T56 trans, and I think for the motor mounts, it was probably, I think it was like a Coyote motor mount. And then we just modified the motor mounts to fit to the bottom of the RB26. And then we also had to utilize the, the pan because of course we're not running the oil drive system. We had to get, I don't remember what oil pan, I think it was an RB25 oil pan. We had to modify and make, I might be able to pull some photos for you, but it's the weirdest looking thing underneath it because it's all converted to real drive and it's just a beautiful masterpiece. And did you have a chance to dyno this? Yes, yeah, so on the dyno, we stopped at 440 horsepower. That's only on 21 pounds of boost. The reason why we stopped is, one, this is a piece of metal from 1965. It has no seat belts. It's uh, has no airbags. Has no headrest. Had no headrest. I mean, you're already asking to die just by driving this. At the time I had my like thousand horsepower twin turbo Uricon. I was like, I don't need this to be the fastest thing in the fleet. It needs to be fast. It needs to scoot. I think it's eight mile time. We did nine second. So it, it's fast, but it's not like a complete death wish. So we stopped at 440. Here's what I like about your builds. They're not just show cars. Yeah. They're meant to be driven, yeah. and they're meant to be driven hard, and yeah. they're meant to last. Yeah. So. That will, RBs meaning to last, we hope so. We haven't <laughs> had any issues yet. Uh, I do feel like if any of them, see the thing is when I drive this car, there's only one setting, and it's beat the shit out of it. When we drive it, it's usually like we're with friends and we're like, oh yeah, so it's like burnouts, bang. I mean, you'll see when I drive it today, it's like, waka, 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 shift, waka. It's just like, we drive it, like we beat the hell out of this one. But it's been good, it's been it's been solid. We've done like 40 passes at multiple different drag strip days. Oh it's never God. had an issue, it's never batting an eye. She's She's been reliable so far, but I hope we don't run out, run out of gas. Oh, let me show you the back, the back's really okay. cool. I love back. the back. So on the inside, we left it completely stock. The only things that we added is we added the CD7 for the AM display, and we have a PCM from Rywire, and he was able to literally like retrofit a lot of stuff in here. So we still have turn signals, high beams, fan control, fuel pumps, all that stuff. And we actually left everything stock, and we also have Carol Shelby's autograph in the car. Pretty That's cool. probably 10 grand of the 37 grand that you spent on this it's car. So, <laughs> it's so badass. That I know, so cool. I think it's so cool. So the back, uh, we just have a radium fuel cell, so it's very cool. Because the old fueling system on this was junk, what we did is, again, took the you know, formula drift type of mentality. And we're like, let's just put a fuel cell in the back and it has all the pumps inside surge tank. And we were able to utilize the factory like gas cap location. Oh, and so normally cool. there's like the, the, you know, the Mustang logo there. So we were able to utilize that and keep it all nice and tidy. So I just love that little feature about it. And um, it's, it's pretty clean. Also, we, I should say the current state of the car is like, it's a uh, rat rod. It's gonna get a full respray. We're gonna uh, make it look very pretty. My goal is to make it into a GT350. So I have all the fender modifications to make the actual ducting that the GT350 had. And I want it to look like a GT350, like perfect restoration, but then it has an RB underneath it. This is what I love about these builds. I honestly know Carol Shelby would be proud of you for keeping this on the road and also making it look nice because this is the essence of hot rodding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's kind of like our JDM modern take and kind of a tip, tip of the hat to Fast and Furious, tip of the hat to Sung. Um, I just was always so amazed by this car and I was like, why has no one done this? 
it's gotta be done. So now it's I, done. It's here. <laughs> it, it, it exists. It exists. Before we go to the shop, the other day I was at a Cars and Coffee and I was like, I never buy Hot Wheels. I was like walking by and I was like, oh, let me just see what the guy has. I saw your name on one of the Hot no Wheels packages. And I was like, what the heck? I was like, I have to buy no this. No way, you So while hose. you're here, I need to that get a Sharpie awesome. and I need you to autograph this. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. And then of course I saw the RTR boys, so I picked that up. Oh and then I saw your, I don't collect Hot Wheels, but I saw these and I was like, yo, that is that's so, so fire. Awesome. I need to pick this up. So, so cool. I'm gonna get a Sharpie before we leave and you gotta sign this. And I, I even added to the markup value too. I paid a premium for that piece. <laughs> I was in Target yesterday and I passed by the Hot Wheels section. I was like, hmm, let me take a look. And I saw this one for sale for like $11 on Target. And I was like, damn, I just paid 40 bucks for the Larry's. I was like, I'm supporting the cause, baby. I'm honored, that's so sick. I think I owe you an explanation as to why I have a ratchet strap on my uh -huh. seat. So the last uh, track day, we were at the drag strip and on the last pull of the day, we probably did maybe 30 to 35 runs that day. We were going on to Hellcat. I was ahead. I literally, I had him and my seat, uh, <laughs> the, the bracket snapped as I was driving. I literally, like on camera, you see me fly backwards as I'm gripping the wheel right. and the seat broke. So we ordered new seats, but they're low maxes from Japan. So it takes like forever to get here. So we're still waiting on the seats. So Adam LZ actually came up with this when he was here. He was like, let me just get a ratchet strap and we have a helmet to kind of support the seat. And there's the, a helmet back here. Yeah, that's the, it's <laughs> keeping my seat up. The hardest thing about this car is because it's, you're not bucket seats, you're on these like flat bench seats, mm -hmm. you get tossed around a lot. So it's really hard to like, I don't know, if you've ever driven like a really fast car with no side bolstering, it's actually like, it really matters. It's pretty hard, how, yeah. yeah you, so you might have to hold on. Like, this is good. This it, is dude, better it, than side bolstering. It bolster. feels so good right now. <laughs> like, it, it feels great. All right, here we go. This is so crazy. It's pretty ridiculous. What what kind of looks do you get when you're driving this around? I now? get almost more looks in this than like any other car. From like my yellow Aventador to my Uricon to like the wildest looking liveries on cars, I get more appreciation, I think, from people in this car. Mainly older dudes that are just like, oh yeah, like nice Shelby, because it like it has like the authentic like the fake replica kit. So I get a lot of good reactions to that. And then um you know, a lot of, when the people notice the motor, they freak out yeah. and it just becomes this big thing. It looks so good, but it also sounds incredible. It sounds great. Yeah, it sounds so good. It just, it's just so cool to see this going down the road while everything else is so much newer. But on top of that, what's under the hood is just magical. That just takes it to the next level. You yeah, know? And, and that's kind of why I love this car is you know, it's it's not like the best, you know, feeling or performing, but it's just, it feels so gangster to be driving around in a car like this. And it just, it's such a unique driving experience that I've like really fallen in love with it. What the hell? Oh my God. Holy crap. Dude, when you're bouncing off the rub limiter, it's crazy. <laughs> it's so much fun. You know, That is insane. I just can't believe. It's like first a lot of noise from the back, and then as soon as the turbos are kicking in, it is so much sound from up front. And I feel like it, to me, it doesn't really have that like, I guess it does to a degree, but it doesn't really sound like an R32 GTR to me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Is there an e-brake or? No e-brake. Should I just? Yeah, go for it. Just move over here. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Safe. Safety first. Got a Willwood pedal set here. Yes, sir. So what kind of transmission is this? Are we 25? I moved 20 feet and it doesn't feel like a Mustang. No, no. <laughs> so a lot of that is the Roadster Shop chassis underneath this. So it has like double wishbone suspension. Um, 
modern coilover setup. It's about as best as you can get this car to feel. And the steering feels pretty light. Pretty light, yeah. Why is that? This is the R32 power steering setup in this car. It uses the steering rack of the Roadster Shop chassis, but we use the power steering from the RB that is to power, yeah. So it's like I a, can't tell you how cool that is. It's I a hodgepodge Frankenstein of a setup. It's really nice because at this point you're still able to enjoy it. You're yeah. still able to use it. Oh yeah. And on top of that, um, it seems pretty reliable because you're kind of like doing like a daily driving duties. In yeah. This so today. we've done a bunch of daily drives, but we I beat the crap out of it. Oh my god. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just that, like, this as is, soon as it yeah, is starting to right? get in. It's so oh good. Oh, my God. I know. The Mustang engineers are just, like, they're turning in their grave. I know. Like, I know. They're, oh punching, my God. they're punching the air right now. Yeah. But you know what? The thing, the point is that this is still on the road. This is still on the road. You're enjoying it. Yeah. And this has honestly become something greater. Something, you know, I a agree. lot of people like to hate on uh, people Weird. like us cutting yeah. up cars, yeah. cutting up the fenders. Oh yeah, you know, not a, keeping it pure, a, yeah. A good example is RWB, right? Very much a so. A lot of people hated on the Kai Song for essentially ruining these cars. Yeah. But guess what? A lot of them were just destined to be normal and ordinary yeah. for their entire lives. And now they have a different purpose. They're getting enjoyed way more than they would have. And yes. into a new audience. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I love this car to death. It has it's such so a good cool. place in my heart. This is so cool. This is what I love about car culture. We're just making friends on the beach, just hanging out, old 60s cars. Amazing. It's kind of a trip to swap. Oh yeah. It's the only one. <laughs> Remember how I told you, I was like, I don't have a fuel gauge. We didn't wire that up. So I really hope it's that. I've never ran a gas before, so I don't know what it would feel like, but I'm pretty sure that that was it. It had to have been it. If not, then the curse of the RB is real. We'll see right now. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey, it works. We good. Uh, let's all say a quick prayer. Baby Jesus, please start. Please start. Let's go, baby! <laughs> <laughs> She's a thirsty one. Who knew RBs need fuel to run? Thank you guys for watching my new Haggerty show. I really wanted to feature automotive trendsetters in our generation. Without Pennzoil, this series wouldn't be possible. They are enthusiasts like us. They believe in car culture and they want to keep it alive. Pennzoil supports a lot of racing, drifting and hill climb and everything in between. They also support a lot of our friends. On top of that, we run Pennzoil in all of our project cars. I hope you like this content because we have a lot coming your way.